Thanks. Uh, first off, we'd like to say thank you to the blockchain workshops and to Constance and Primavera. So this uh, project came out of the last blockchain workshops, um, a hackathon that was focused on identity and reputation and government systems in the context of decentralization and the blockchain. Uh, so our project, Fabric, um, is a reputation management system on Ethereum. The three of us are on that team and then three other people who aren't here today. So um, at the hackathon in March, um, we started out thinking about reputation um, and thinking about the current um, digital reputation landscape and what that looks like. And so our initial examples are systems like eBay, where your reputation is you know, defined by different behaviors um, you perform according to like a buyer or seller role or other um, peer-to-peer economies and um, such as Airbnb or Uber. Um, but the thing to remember about these um, reputation systems now is that the individual um, doesn't own their reputation and also has, has no say around um, the metrics um, what defi that define that reputation. Um, so, and we also thought about kind of like what is, um, what's, what's our vision for an ideal uh, digital reputation system and we, we thought that um, it'd be great if individuals had a say in um, defining those metrics for their reputation and also owning their reputation. Um, so next we asked, um, you know, thought about in terms of the blockchain, um, what if you could have a digital representation of your identity in the form of a profile and have it hosted on the blockchain? And then we thought about what if that profile contained different attributes, um, different you know, reputational attributes that can be updated via a smart contract. Um, and these attributes would represent social capital. Um, and those metrics for social capital would be defined by um, a crypto token using metadata. Yeah, so a lot of the discussion in the panel before, um, a lot of those ideas are questions that we've thought about and have been inspired about also. Um, so our intention is to create this sort of reputation layer uh, that may be useful to communities that want to use that to self-organize themselves. Um, so if we take this decentralized paradigm seriously, this is a need that will need to happen for multiple different contexts. Um, so our project is open source. Um, we look at it as being a customizable framework, so you could use it for many different purposes, set your own token issuance rights, set your own um, metrics in order to interpret that. Um, and interoperability is a big uh, component of this. So Primavera was touching upon having uh, communities that you're part of and being able to move through those communities. Um, and so we use this um, as sort of the foundational layer, but then could build other things on top of that um, especially within this community where sharing of resources and information is um, something that's talked about a lot. Great. So our deliverable for this blockchain workshop hackathon was a white paper. And in that white paper, we defined exactly what Fabric would be and, and how it could be used. In particular, uh, we, we defined what uh, we would need in terms of hosting this profile on the blockchain in particular a name service, and so we allowed uh, people to create uh, a profile with uh, a pseudonym, but the name service would then be needed to resolve that pseudonym into the public blockchain address. Uh, this is really similar to OneName or Namecoin, uh, except uh, we used Ethereum as our uh, smart contract platform, which allowed us to improve upon uh, Namecoin in the sense that uh, we uh, allow much more than uh, a limited number of uh, bytes of information per name to be stored. And uh, as the blockchain presents a sort of key value store per user, we can also store uh, an arbitrary amount of information, a, a, an array of attributes. Uh, and this data uh, uh, can be written uh, or read or written uh, from other smart contracts. So. Given this uh, uh, ability to represent the profile on the blockchain, 
We also uh, defined what exactly a reputational token would be in terms of the smart contract and how uh, those tokens could be transferred or, or the actions that could be applied to uh, those tokens. Uh, in, in particular, we made no commitment to uh, any particular type of, uh, of token, sort of what it would mean or what its value was. Uh, our, our vision was really to make this an extensible framework that others would be able to use. And I like to think of it actually as sort of a middleware between an identity management system and a governance framework or, or mechanism. So this provides uh, the link between uh, identities having certain attributes, which would be a reputation, and a governance platform, which would uh, uh, be able to execute uh, actions or privilege or assign privileges according to the possession of, uh, of those tokens. Uh, and also exactly how those tokens are managed, the whole life cycle uh, is also something that we leave uh, to be extensible. And in particular, we, em we envision that the, the way in which those tokens are managed are going to be evolved over time. So that governance layer above uh, uh, Fabric could provide mechanisms for um, you know, how uh, tokens are used, if they're issued, if they're going to have uh, 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 time uh, any restrictions or you know, otherwise um, uh, need a way to control their entire life cycle. So a lot of these ideas are um, very theoretical and um, I think exciting to people because of that. But so we wanted to do something very tangible in our eight weeks. Um, so there was a music festival called Mysteryland and um, it happens on the original Woodstock grounds. There's 20,000 or so people that go. Um, and it's music, healing garden, a bunch of different activities that go on there, a lot of different communities that go um, with their groups of friends. And we had a Woodstock Lounge of the Future, which we curated this teepee. Um, we had some energy drinks and herba mate that were donated. And so we had people sign up, create profiles. They could exchange tokens that they got, which I'll go into more about that, um, for these energy drinks. We had a TV that was displaying the app. Um, and really, it was a space for people to come and talk about where the, these kind of technologies, what the future is enabling in terms of community formation, and the problems that are arising because of that, which we sort of discussed in the last panel, and how we might learn from that. Um, so the app, what it allows you to do, it's a, so it's a web app, um, and it allows you to send and receive or beam reputation tokens. So the way that we set it up for this version was you sign up, you get 100 tokens, you can do with them what you please. Uh, you can create a tribe and you can join a tribe of people. Um, you can, well, we were gonna have badges, but you can have a badge which basically means um, you're a DJ, you're a tribe, uh, you're a piece of art or your stage. Um, and then built upon that in the future, it'll be a way for you to sort of discover other people that are like you based upon things that you've beamed um, or based upon uh, what's currently trending. Um, that's one future application. Um, and then you could exchange those tokens for something. So we had the drinks here, but it could be photos in a photo booth. There's different applications. Um, so this is the homepage. This is actually working. We just don't have internet right now. Um, but so the website, it's rfabric.com. Um, this is our explore page, so you can see different uh, profiles. So one of those is a stage, main stage. So these are the ones that are trending. So you have uh, a couple people who have some reputation points, different stages, fields, and you could create a profile for anything. Um, so this is a profile, this is my profile. Um, you can see my reputation. So I started out with 100, um, and I sent some out. And then I can claim what I am. I'm a creature, I'm a stage, I'm DJ, I'm art. Um, and then I could beam 10, if so if this was I was on the profile of someone else, uh, main stage, I could beam main stage. It would deduct from my account and add it to their account. Um, and another thing I can do is add a tribe. So this is a tribe called the fam. And we actually went with a, peop a group of people. It's a, like 180 people uh, group from New York City. So it's a way for you to just sort of link up with those people and um, could have future applications. Um, and so Patrick's gonna talk about our, our architecture. Right, so what we just saw there, the Fabric front end as a web app application uh, was uh, meant that uh, the, the logic for beaming and, and, and uh, sending reputation was 
uh, done in the web client. So in the browser, uh, we use the cryptographic library to sign these transactions and submit them to an RPC server, which then split the transaction into uh, the part that needed to update the Ethereum smart contract and, uh, and, and ultimately the blockchain. And simultaneously, since uh, uh, we had photos and, and other uh, uh, sort of um, large content, we needed a backend database. So uh, the photos and, and other pieces of the, of the web page that couldn't fit in the blockchain were written to a, a Postgres database. And uh, the web app itself, the JavaScript was, uh, or not JavaScript, uh, but Rails, uh, Ruby, and, and a combination with JavaScript uh, was presented back to the user through the browser uh, using the Rails web server. Uh, the technology dependencies that we had, uh, as mentioned, the decentralized storage of these public identities on the blockchain, uh, as we stated, we Im improved significantly over uh, what's available with Namecoin. Um, we also used a smart contract framework that allowed us to do that. But some of the things that uh, in, in the field trial became evident that we'd like to improve were the web application itself choosing uh, or adopting a more decentralized web application framework, uh, which today there, there aren't too many choices. And so um, it was a, a trade-off between what we wanted to focus on in terms of actually making a, a field trial uh, user experience rich enough to engage uh, the audience, but also make sure that we were testing out the right uh, things and asking the right questions about the smart contract implementation. And uh, a, another area where we saw opportunity for improvement was in the identity layer that Fabric would depend on. So since we did everything in the web browser and all the crypto was in the browser, not necessarily uh, perfectly secure. And so we'd like to move towards maybe a har hardware wallet or separate identity management from the web application itself. And as demonstrated today, uh, it's kind of important to have a connection to the internet. Otherwise, the app won't work at all. Um, so <laughs> uh, some of the things that uh, became evident at the field trial uh, are also evident here. So a potential solution might be to, uh, to, uh, to, to adopt a sort of mesh framework and, and look for smart contract and blockchain solutions that could uh, continue to function even when they're not connected to the internet. So if it was a local community like uh, the Mysteryland Festival presented that was mostly geolocated in, uh, 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 in, in a proximity that a mesh network would be very successful, then you could, of course, host the blockchain itself locally and share it amongst the smartphones or other computers or bring boxes in that would be able to uh, run full Ethereum nodes. However, we I think it's still an open question about how that uh, sort of side chain would merge back to uh, the, the sort of public Ethereum blockchain uh, once network connectivity was uh, uh, or, uh, um, uh, achieved. So in particular, some details about the smart contract that we implemented. We used Solidity, a programming language that compiled our, our smart contract into uh, the Ethereum virtual machine bytecode. We implemented Beam actions, so we were able to specify the quantity and the destination or the public address of uh, who's going to be receiving our reputation. We also implemented the burn action. Uh, and, and both of them were actually, uh, if you beam to somebody, you have the same amount reduced from uh, the reputation quantity that you have. So it's a costly signal. Uh, it's an incentive for people to not uh, burn all or, or beam all of their reputation, but also to interact with each other and interact with the exhibits so that they would earn reputation back, so they could effectively stay in the game. Uh, some of the benefits we saw in using the blockchain is that we feel like with this, we don't have the restriction uh, of um, having a central authority being able to be a gateway to uh, the effective use of, of the reputation token. So we see it as censorship resistant. Um, and, and so going forward, um, we thought about some additional use cases beyond just the music festival. Um, so one that we wrote about in our white paper was thinking about um, larger festivals and um, events like Burning Man and other projects um, where 
essentially a reputation layer like this could be of help in um, certain situations like ticket issuance. That can sometimes be a big problem at Burning Man. Um, uh, we also thought about um, using different governance layers um, in addition to the reputation layer, um, and that could be used in situations like energy management um, and metered resources. Um, so thinking about things like, like solar energy and smart grids. Um, in, a, in a community and how a reputation system um, and other layers of liquid democracy might be able to um, kind of organize um, and um, a sort of distributed system such as that. Uh, we also thought about uh, public spaces uh, and community-owned resources, you know, community centers or museums or parks and thinking about how uh, a reputation system like this could um, organize um, usage, fair usage of community resources like that. So yeah, there's more information about our project. That's our white paper and the website when you have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, do we have questions? So how much do we actually code? Uh, and well, so first I think as soon as you get on the internet, uh, go check out the website. You can actually play with it, uh, log in, create a profile, uh, populate your profile with some information, upload a photo, uh, and then go about uh, beaming uh, some of your reputation to others in the community. Yeah, exactly. It was a really great experience to have uh, people who had never been introduced to technology like this uh, to be able to walk up with their smartphones and create a profile themselves and then walk around and participate uh, with the community uh, in the event and, uh, and also you know, really great feedback coming back from them. So it was very interactive and, and really fun.